Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, King Ricky and K Fabe do something they haven't done in a really, really long time. And that's laid on thick with some wrestling, some pastel suits, some people breaking a forbidden door or a prohibited portal. And is AEW and WWE in a really Cold War S? you know, kind of arms race, because I think so. So we're gonna lay down the battleground as we predict NXT Battleground going coming up this Sunday, right here on King's Rings Podcast, episode number 378, exclusively here on WrestleMania Radio. And it starts right now. And hello, everybody. Welcome once again to Kings of the Rings podcast exclusively here on WrestleAttic Radio. I am your host, King Ricky Rose. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. We are here live right now on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. So if you like what you're li- what you're seeing right now, or if you're in the future and like what you're listening to, please leave a like, follow, share, and subscribe. Leave all of that stuff, and maybe leave a comment, you know, because, you know, we, need, we like the feedback. We do like the feedback. Uh, thank you guys again for joining us. It is a two-person show today. Willie T is still out there somewhere in the world. Uh, 434 days since his last incident. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, <laughs> I am very, I am very, very proud of Will. He's also out there getting a bleach blonde bad build butch body for the second week in uh, in a row. But we would have no fear, folks, because K Fabe is here. Happy Pride, K Fabe. How are you? Happy Pride. I think I finally defrosted, and <laughs> <I'm at> <laughs> <laughs> I finally defrosted in time for Pride very happy to be back it's been a very busy couple of weeks yeah it has i'm not in search of my youth anymore my throwing up my back was so two weeks ago you mean, to be completely honest with you i totally forgot <laughs> i totally forgot the changes like i was like i there's always one thing that i kind of screw up every week like whether it's like not just ch- fact it's it's either changing the fact or changing some sort of notification or changing will's number um, since the last <laughs> t- you just happen to be the thing today so i i'm i'm sorry i'm sorry Kay. but what's my real facts today i don't it was in search of their you i didn't change it that's that was the thing so i mean if you so want to get a new fact? if you want to give me a new one i might be able to edit it on the fly right now it's up to you you can mention my Emmy nominated Kelly Clarkson audience member appearance. <laughs> are you, wait, so wait, are you actually going to be on the show? Like, did you ask a question or anything? No, I'm just in the audience. I doubt you'll see me, but it airs on Monday. Okay. And I'm, I'm like low key so afraid to like watch it back because <laughs> like I was rambunctious. I mean, I would expect nothing less from you, Kay. You're always rambunctious. Yeah, like, I was, like, obsessed with Kelly Clarkson. Like, I voted for her on American Idol in fifth grade. I was, like, like, I remember, like, in middle school, like, being on the Kelly Clarkson message board, and there was a Kelly Idol, and it was, like, a contest. It was a whole thing. (laughs) Like, I was committed to her in middle school. I am now picturing you, like just on your little computer in your room with like one light on and like dark air and you just typing away the Kelly Clarkson message boards. No, literally. <laughs> I went to see from Justin to Kelly oh, the day it came out. Oh my God. <laughs> I am a day one from Justin to Kelly viewer and I loved it. It's such a terrible movie. That should um, be your new fact but, next week then. Day one, Justin to Kelly viewer. But The thing I'm, like, the most, like, nervous about about this viewing. Mm -hmm. So the day before I went to Kelly Clarkson, I went to the Mets game with my friends. Uh And I got color. And I've got, I got some color. Oh, yeah? Like, um, I'm a little red right now. The purple's kind of masking it a little bit, Mm -hmm. kind of, hopefully. But I put on, like, SPF 50. And that did not do anything. Like, I got burned quickly. Um, we were like, I don't know. Have you been to, you've been to City Field, right? 
Uh, actually, surprisingly enough, I was talking about this the other day with my friend who's a Mets fan. I have actually, you haven't? I've never been to City Field whatsoever. Well, actually, I saw, I forgot the date, but I look, you can look it up. The Mets are playing the Yankees at City Field this month. Subway series. It's not this week. It's not this weekend. It's next weekend, if, if anything, or later on. It's, I think it's, and it's like early in the week. I was going to be like Kings of the Rings trip to the Yets, the Yankees and Mets. Maybe I actually I don't know if I still can. I know my my undergrad. This has nothing to do with wrestling. I saw, I apologize, so, uh, but I know my undergrad uh, as having like an alumni night at Yankee Stadium on like a Wednesday, and I can get tickets, yeah. which includes like a pregame, oh, that's which cute. includes pregame hospitality and seats. Ooh, yeah. The Yankees and Mets, um, June twenty fifth and June twenty sixth, and I think they're both at City Field. Oh, it's Tuesday and Wednesday. It's possible. We should do, we should go. I mean, since the, no one's seeing the Mets except for the Yankees. <laughs> no one's seeing the Mets these days. <laughs> it was, I mean, we went on a Sunday, but it, we went to like the 140 game. It's pretty packed. Yeah. It was very fun. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a big family. Uh, event, I'm hi, Boris. Bless but we'll bless figure you. it out. All right, so let's get let's get into this right now. There's been a lot of crazy stuff. Hi, Boris. Hey. Hi, Simba. There's been a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world of of pro wrestling. First and foremost, I think the craziest thing that's going on in the world of pro wrestling, and the messiest thing that's going on in the world of pro wrestling, is the Liv Morgan and Dom Mysterio ridiculousness that is going on so Liv Morgan is literally laying it on thick on Dom Mysterio completely it is I don't know how to describe this Kay but you know you thought the 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 Liv Morgan revenge tour whatever would end after she got the belt but it's not what she's doing the belt was never the issue it's a matter of her taking everything from Rhea and she is cracking Dom Every week she's gone. She's gone so nuts. She Dominic just posted uh, that Liv Morgan went and pretty much liked every photo on his Instagram. Like to, really? today. Yes. That's crazy. That's, <laughs> that's such great attention to detail on WWE's part. I don't know if they told her to do that or she made the decision on her own to like go through his entire Instagram. That's fucking genius. <laughs> Have you been following this kayfabe with this? live kind of acting messy kind, kind of? of sort of i uh i like watched a little bit of raw today like during work um mm-hmm. and i saw last week with the kiss i was like so confused because i saw the kiss the next day and i watched raw live last week and i'm like this didn't happen on tv so there's been a lot of discussion about that uh because it happened two weeks in a row because after gunther won the semis of king of the ring they cut as soon as like jay tapped um, or not yeah. tapped or whatever. And so I don't know what it is, but USA has a hard cut for them at 11. It's a hard, there's no overrun anymore. The only yeah. overrun they give is the NXT, which sounds absolutely ridiculous. And I don't know why that is because it wasn't shown on TV because it, it happened after 11 and USA cut the feed. It was yeah, a hard like, cut. I remember Raw used to go into like 11.08 to 11.13 every night without fail. Yeah. And I don't know now, why we're, like, do- I don't know why we're doing that now. And NXT kind of gets the boost of it. Maybe because I don't know how true this is. Because like I've said, I haven't watched NXT in a few years now. Maybe Raw, usually that third hour usually gets a little more intense. Mm-hmm. And maybe, I don't know. I don't know if it's more expensive or like to like air raw later versus NXT. Because NXT is two hours, right? It goes from eight to 10. Yeah. And then they have like a, you know, maybe an eight minute run over. Could it be more expensive that extra hour, like a differential of some sort? I'm, I guess. I guess if that's the case, I got people have to make their times. Yeah, that that that's the thing is, but I I kind of love this. This is messy. It's it has drama written all over it. I think the best part about it is Dom's cracking, and I'll be honest with you, Dom. Quickly, man to man, no one's going to blame you. <laughs> no one's going except for Rhea. Rhea's going to blame you, but I don't, no one's going to blame you. Okay, not to be mean, be like mean. I'm not shaming Liv. Rhea's so much hotter than Liv Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> 
come on. <laughs> I feel like it's not believable. It's believable to me. I. It's like, it reminds me of like when, when Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce. Oh, yeah, that did happen. That did happen. Mm-hmm. We got one of the greatest albums of all time about but it. And then Deja came out with 444 and said Beyonce did the same thing. Probably. I believe Sideberg that she, her and her bodyguard Julius had a thing. That's what everybody allegedly. said, yeah. That's what a lot of people said. Julius. But I don't know. I understand that no offense, but offense, men are weak. <laughs> Dom's, Dom cracked real quick. You know it's bad when Finn Balor has to step in multiple times in the same episode. Yeah. <laughs> Finn, Bla- Finn Bauer is... Finn's the good friend. Cock- <laughs> yeah. He's simultaneously being good buddy, but also I cock- at the same buddy. time. <laughs> good. <laughs> Finn came in like to protect the property. You're not messing with my son. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. You are bad. No. No. <laughs> and Dom's like, but I kind of want to... <laughs> Like, I feel like when Rhea comes back, like it has to be like Rhea, like Dom's dick on a pole. <laughs> at, like, Survivor Series. I have a feeling. I have a really, really interesting feeling that it is um, that I think Rhea is going to come back sooner than expected. I wouldn't be surprised if Rhea comes back by SummerSlam. I think she's coming back for SummerSlam. Yeah, I don't think she's that injured. Like, I mean, I saw the hit. It looked it looked pretty bad. And if it's if it's what I suspected it would be, like a collarbone, those are shitty to heal, to be completely yeah. honest. Um, because I've known several people who broken collarbones and sometimes they never really fully completely heal. But I think she's gonna come back sooner than expected. Me too. Like I didn't expect her being out for like too long. Yeah, I think Liv runs kind of psychotic. As she's being right now, even more intense on Dom for an entire summer and by SummerSlam, Rhea returns or the day after SummerSlam. I like low key feel like they're moving it a little too fast. I thought so at first because I honestly thought that when she won at King Queen of the Ring, I was like, are they going to are they going to summer a punk Liv Morgan? I thought this was going to be like a burn all the way to SummerSlam. Where Me too. Where she like wins at SummerSlam, but apparently not. Yeah, I feel like it's just, like, accelerated so fast, and I even feel like Dom cracking. Like, yeah, men are going to crack fast. That's expected. But, like, I feel like there hasn't been much time. It it, it all got screwed up because Rhea got injured, and so Becky extended her stay for about a month, month and a half, essentially being a transitional to to have some sort of, you know, giving it over to, to live. Did the best yeah. that she could. And I, I think this is rushed, but they're, right now, it's one of the most intriguing things in WWE right now. and It's super fun and chaotic. Yeah, and it's the most interesting Liv Morgan's ever been. Oh, for sure. You know, just being this kind of psychotic, obsessed, like, is she really into Dom? Is she not really into Dom? Is she doing this just to spite Rhea? Like, and no one knows what's at she's play not here. Into Dom. She's not into Dom. I don't know. She's... <laughs> it's 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 pretty wild and i i do enjoy every moment of it whatsoever but moving on uh i guess it's a precedent now that if a wrestler comes out in a pastel colored suit they are making a retirement <laughs> <laughs> okay to a t aj styles came out in a very nice blue for him. I thought he looked really nice. Uh, he looks very pretty. He looked, yeah, he looked really nice. Hair was done well. You had all the speculation. They set it up really well that um that he he wanted to get a rematch. And Nick Aldis is like, no, I can't do that anymore. Back of the line. And Age is like, I don't have that much time left, so now I gotta do what I have to do. And he comes out and he gives the speech. And it's totally believable. He talked about how many times he's missed big moments of his children. And I was like, oh, it makes a lot of sense. He goes, my son just graduated. And I thought to myself, how many how, how many of these other events have I missed? Maybe I just need to be a phenomenal father. Like, it was it was a well-crafted speech. Yeah. It was really good. And then he's like, this is the house that AJ Styles built. I want to give the keys to you, Cody. I was like, this... Seemed the, it was really good. It was, really good. <laughs> it was a really good speech. <laughs> it was it was good. And then you know what told what 
told me everything I needed to know. The little growth thing? No, not even that. That text message thing was really nice. And I think that was legitimately a shoot from Cody. Mm -hmm. Um, It was... It was it was them posing for the posing on the four sides of the ring. He oh, kept, I didn't even notice he that. He kept he kept being like, "Hey, let's take pictures. Let's take pictures. Look at pictures." And I was like, "Oh, he's turning." And then he clotheslined the living crap out of him. And Styles clashed them off the steel steps while the good brother stayed guard and didn't let anybody get through, which I thought was absolutely hysterical. But I love it. I love it. And even so much, Mark Henry was like, "That was awesome." I wonder. So I heard Mark Henry's contract with AEW is also up. He's, I wonder he if is he's not. He is involved. not going to renew. So, oh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I am assuming that Mark is returning to WWE under a Legends contract or a backstage agent or something like that. Well, that's why I was asking. I'm like, I wonder if he like was able to sign. Like, did he produce this segment himself? <laughs> it doesn't seem like it. It seems like from all of his posting, he was thoroughly like entertained by it yeah <laughs> like i can't believe they did this twice i live for it <laughs> it worked every time marks was even better do you remember marks i do because like he 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 brought his boots out to the ring too do you remember that oh my god he did i haven't watched it in a long time he brought his boots out to the ring and then cena and but it, the difference was cena just came out randomly i think no, I think Cena's in the ring and then Mark came out and then he was like, no, John, stay. I really like, don't remember <laughs> how it went at all. I need to rewatch it. It's been a long time. It was so fun. It was such a fun move. And I don't know what they do with AJ here because I legitimately thought he was leaving and he still might leave and he still might get suspended or something because now that there's kind of a working relationship with WWE and TNA, which totally blew the roofs off our show last week. If you listen to it, okay. Um, I actually didn't listen yet. Yeah. Did you know that this year is TNA's like 20th anniversary? Really? It wouldn't surprise me if AJ gets kayfabe suspended or fired. From and w- shows up on and show- TNA. shows up on TNA for like a. I think about- people would lose it. I would okay, lose hear it. Okay, me out. I'm this close. I'm this close to watching Joe TNA. Hendry. I'm this close to AJ watching Styles. TNA weekly. AJ Styles versus Joe Hendry. If Joe Hendry shows up <laughs> in the Rumble next year, <laughs> I they have to. <laughs> But also for real, how do we watch? T- I don't. I still. It's like a mystery to me. I feel like <laughs> TNA is in Narnia. I don't know where to find TNA it. TNA is on Access it? TV, which I have via my cable package, so I can watch whenever I want. I also have an. I also can get it on demand too via my uh, cable package as well. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, I just haven't I gotten have to. I have Hulu Live, so I'll have to see if I have. Do you know that. what this also means in this giant Cold War S arms race that it's going on in WWE and AEW and all of that? Who signed hmm. to the TNA roster? Dana Brooke. Oh, yeah. AJ Francis. Uh, Dolph AKA, Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler could make a return, and it would be perfect. I think Dolph Ziggler is going to be in the 2025 Rumble. I'm calling it now. <laughs> should have been it me. should have been me. <laughs> oh, my God. Dolph. I Listen, this could be Dolph Ziggler's way back in. And it would be it would be absolutely hysterical. TNA is TNA is a good product, very very good product. I'm like I'm interested in it. I'm just like, how do I get there? I don't know. You know their their social media team is great. Anytime WWE does something with a TNA like alumnus, TNA will post like a highlight video of, some, of a match they did. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> it's really good. Whoever things they do is really good. So I don't know if AJ is going to stick around. Or he's going to go to TNA. The world's wide open right now in pro wrestling, including in AEW. So Mercedes Monet, the greatest female wrestler of all time, in my biased opinion, <laughs> um, just They're very biased my opinion. extremely biased opinion. I, I totally, I am totally on board with that. Won the TBS championship, which is kind of weird, but hey, whatever. You're paying her a lot of money, but you're going to give her a secondary title. I, I understand. Uh, had a match against Sky Blue on AEW, and then. Got mic checked by Stephanie Vacare 
the NJPW Strong Champion. You know, the title they kind of made for Mercedes. Um, and then, mm. <laughs> you know, um, showed up with the NJPW Strong Belt, the belt that Mercedes lost to Willow, before also getting injured in the process, showing up on Dynamite TV. Uh, a little, little, some little factoids from her from our friend Will Gray, who was on the show last week from his article on Last World on Last Word on Sports. Uh, she is 31 year old Chilean born wrestler, been wrestling for 15 years. So turned pro at the age of 16, debuted in CMLL, the other big wrestling promotion in Mexico outside of, uh, in beside, uh, triple a. So she debuted in CMLL in 2019, uh, did some American independence in 2023, debuted in new Japan for the NJPW, uh, Women's Strong Women's Division, which she currently has the title. She also holds the CMLL Women's title and the CMLL Tag Team title. It is possible. It is very, very possible, very, very probable that she is showing off to face Sasha for the TBS Championship at Forbidden Door later on this uh, month on Long Island, New York. And- Are you going? <laughs> Hell no, probably. Um, Why? You should go. I don't, uh, I don't know. Um, there are they are doing a lot of fire sales for that. Um, it's a fire. Yeah, but it is also very very possible that if she wins the TBS title from Mercedes, she would then own four titles on three different continents in the world. That's fucking cool. Really impressive. She is pretty crazy. much the female belt collector of CMLL, and she is on a tear. Like I said, she's only 31. She's relatively young. I've seen some of her highlights. Uh, her and Mercedes faced uh, first off in New Japan and the strong division uh, before Mercedes got injured, and they have great chemistry together. This woman's fantastic. She has a great presence to her. She has a great look. Um She's going to get scooped up really quickly by somebody, either AEW officially or WWE somewhere within the next two to three years. But she is, she has all the tools to be very, very successful. Um, AEW has forbidden door. WWE probably has what's known as probably a prohibited portal. <laughs> um, now, and I, <laughs> I swear, if WWE takes prohibited portal and makes the pay per view, it'd be great because let's, I think they should. Let's think about this here because I was talking about this with my guest uh, last week. So, AEW has a working partnership with New Japan Pro Wrestling, who also has a working partnership with CMLL. So those are your big three for aid for for that side of the mm-hmm. aisle. WWE, by and large, now has a working relationship with TNA, saving TNA from the dumpster fire that was their working partnership with AEW. TNA also has a working partnership with AAA, the legendary oh. promotion from Mexico. So, when you look at it, you have AEW, New Japan, and CMLL, WWE, TNA, and AAA. Let's also not forget, WWE has working partnerships with All Japan Pro Wrestling because they sent Regal Sun over there to do the Triple Crown Tournament. Mm-hmm. They also have WXW under their pocket in, uh, in Germany because they've had a lot of their content on the network. They also, WWE, for example, has a working partnership with Progress Wrestling, which is a very amazing UK wrestling promotion. This is an arms race, Kay. <laughs> like that's cr- it's just fucking crazy. Yeah, it's this is a huge deal. Like the doors are about to be. The doors don't exist anymore. Anybody can show up anywhere, anytime. Okay, but my question is, when do WWE and AEW finally collab? Oh, 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 oh Jesus! Not for a long time. A- you think? The problem is AEW can't keep WWE out of their mouth. Yeah, that's true. That's the problem. Tony Khan has to bring it up at every at every major media thing. Hell, MGF hadn't returned for like five minutes and he brought up Vince McMahon. Why? No reason for it. But he just I would, did. I would argue, and also this is me being very biased yeah, yeah. about my boy MJF, but MJF's been gone for like a hot minute, so I feel like him bringing up Vince McMahon only makes sense be- now because he's been gone. But he knew he knew what was up. He knew what of happened. Of course with Vince. he did. Of course he did. He's still going to make the cheap shot get that heat for talking about Vince. It didn't even seem like it's... it was heat to me, but that's just me. 
Well, I think that was the intent. Yeah. You're trying to be edgy talking about Vince McMahon and our year 2024. <laughs> He's been gone long enough where I found it appropriate. If, say, like if Max Caster and like the acclaimed are still do, like mentioning Vince McMahon in their raps every week, yeah. then I'd be like, all right, wrap it up. We've talked about this 50 times. MJF's been gone. I forgive it. Yeah, I don't. I was like, ah, it kind of it kind of fell off for me. I mean, it was bad enough he came out like O2 Triple H. It was bad enough he had a really bad spray tan on. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that tan was bad. <laughs> bad, bad, bad. Oh, I was like, oh, was like, oh buddy, no. Maxwell, what are we doing? And it's even worse. Have you seen his shirt, Kay? What shirt? The 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 the, oh, AE, the Wolf of Wrestling shirt, which, by the way, oh, he took from an indie wrestler named Stephen Wolf. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Did you see the shirt? I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> Oh my god! I just I, the first thing I see, MJF's according to Sports Key. I don't know how fucking reliable this is. Yeah, Max's contract is fifteen mil a year. I mean, AW has the perceived like net worth Bumped. for it. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Probably the only reason why he left, why he stayed, not left, why he stayed. Like, good for him, of course, mm-hmm. but like. Like, make that money. Yeah. But that's so much money. Like, doesn't Roman make, like, five or something like that? I think Roman's might be in... Roman's, I think, in the Brock Lesnar territory. Sasha's apparently up there, too. Brock was... Roman was... uh, Brock was up at, like, 13, something like that. 13 or 12. That's so crazy. That's so much money. It is. There is... As you're still looking for the MJF shirt, I saw a little fact on it. It may or may not be correct. That, um... That apparently the the base salary for a for a main roster performer in WWE is three fifty. Okay. The base salary for a WWE employee is three fifty? Live uh for not live for a main roster employee main roster talent. That I knew. Okay, I found this shirt. This is the most generic ass thing. <laughs> it's so bad. I've made better shirts than this. It's so I'm wearing a better shirt than <laughs> that this. you made. <laughs> that I made. Um and like I I'm a sucker for fucking MJF merch. <laughs> if I don't if it's not a CM Punk shirt I'm wearing, it's an MJF shirt, but that's bad. I made a joke that we should sell it and undercut AEW. We should sell one? We should make that same exact shirt and undercut AEW. <laughs> <laughs> And see how far we get before we get like a cease and desist. <laughs> but what would happen if we got a cease and desist? We just we would we would still get the profits of it, but we wouldn't be able to produce it again. We wouldn't. We have to take it off like the uh, shop. Hold on, let me pull up Canva. <laughs> you are about to make it right now? <laughs> That's how me slapping Majesty came to be. I made it while on the show. That's how kayfabe came to be. I named myself on the show. We helped name that. I think the chat helped us name it on the show. What's so crazy about the whole me figuring it out on the show? In my like OG wrestling group chat, my name has been kayfabe in there for years. And you and you and started it, to and it and it never clicked to use it for that. <laughs> It happens. Never, not once. It it happens. But let's move on, folks. So the reason that we're here for the season, NXT Battleground, is this Sunday, June 9th, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I think pre-show starting at 7.30 Eastern, live from the UFC Apex Arena in Las Vegas, UFC Apex Building Center, whatever. If you guys don't know what UFC Apex is, it was Fight Island during the pandemic. Uh, so it's a what's Fight Island? So du- it's okay. It's, it's okay. Okay. So during the pandemic, UFC was still running events in what they called Fight Island. So it's pretty much this. It seemed like a pretty r- relatively small room. And they put an octagon in and they would have their fights. And it was a minimal amount of people there, which is kind of my primary concern with this NXT battleground coming up um, is that I don't know. They they sold tickets. I didn't see the seating chart at all for NXT battleground, but I'm like, how many people are actually going to show? Like, how are we going to make this a production of a WWE caliber? Because they keep 
they keep saying UFC Apex. UFC. Like, I don't know how much that arena or that location is going to be able to hold. Like, this is going to be a yeah. very unique situation for WWE. It's the first time they're truly publicly doing an integration of UFC and WWE. We're doing another one very soon as well, where SmackDown's going to be at an arena on Friday, and then UFC is doing an, doing an event that next day on Saturday. So they are messing around with kind of back-to-back, you know, mega weekends and things like that. I think that's coming up this weekend, actually. Uh, but NXT Battleground from Vegas, it was, for the most part, NXT Battleground was going to be like, okay, very interesting show. And then last week happened, and all ego Ethan Page wasn't the biggest surprise that happened last week. But he, he wasn't. No, all ego Ethan Page showed up. He took out Trick Williams. Apparently, according to the chat earlier on today, Ethan Page is officially, officially K, a part of NXT. He is. N- That's fucking crazy. <laughs> he is no longer with AEW. They have signed him to a contract. Um, that video package was great. So here's what you don't know. Okay. So for the last couple of weeks, metaphor, the Noam Dar's group, um, has been met. Noam Dar is still signed. Noam Dar's hysterical. I think I ask this question <laughs> every, every you few do. months. Every time we bring up Noam Dar, you're like, he's still there? And I'm like, yeah. Noam Dar and his group of minorities that he hangs out with, because that's what Noam Dar does. <laughs> I, I shit you not. <laughs> I, <laughs> I shit you not. It's Jakara Jackson, uh, Oro Mensa, and Lash Legend, who I think is the real life girlfriend of uh, of Trick Williams, and they're fun. Trick Williams really? openly flirts with her, and she's and she like almost breaks character every time. <laughs> So for the last couple of weeks, Metaphor's been been getting taken out by a mis- by a mystery person, and no one's been able to figure out who it is. So Lash mm-hmm. went to Trick and was like, "Is it you?" And it was like, "Oh, it's not me." And then the lights went out, and Ethan Page showed up on NXT, oh, beat up, and he goes, "I'm the one who's been taken out." Metaphor, it's me, and he's like, "NXT is now all ego." The best part of a call, K, was this. So Vic Joseph, who I adore, he goes, oh, my God, that's Ethan. Wasn't he on AE? And and Booker goes, whoa, whoa. So they're not allowed to say AEW yet. It was a good good tease. (laughs) It was a brilliant Mm -hmm. tease. So this hasn't been official yet as of now, unless Fretz tells me otherwise. But we are going to. I could have sworn Fretz said that in the chat, but I might have misread him. He said Ethan Page is NXT. Um, or all ego is NXT, which great get. Ethan Page has been a talent for a very, very long time and has done and has done good work every place he's gone. It's TNA, AEW for like three seconds, and now NXT, and also on the independence, Canadian born wrestler, by the way. That's probably why I know a lot about him. Um, they haven't made this official yet, but I am assuming that Ethan Page and Trick Williams will be fighting for the NXT championship this Sunday at the UFC Apex uh, Arena. If that does not occur, it's nothing off our shoulder for a prediction battle. But for all intents and purposes, we're going to make a prediction right now. Kayfabe, I'm going to give it to you. All ego or whoop that trick. Um, I think trick's not done yet, so I'm going to say trick. Mm-hmm. Ethan Page has been here for two days. He has time to cook. <laughs> not everybody. Okay. Not like this might be a controversial opinion. Not Probably everybody not. needs to fucking win the title on their first match mm-hmm. or their first pay-per-view or their first whatever. It's okay to have long-term storytelling. Yeah. And it's okay to <laughs> let him lose. He's not being buried. No. For you fucking marks that are like, he lost. <laughs> Trips is burying him. <laughs> he should go to AEW. Well, he did that, and we look and look. <laughs> <laughs> he literally did that, and look how that worked out for him. <laughs> I know it didn't work for him. For wrestling fans, are, for wrestling fans are so fucking angry and so fucking bitter, and they're never happy. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, Ollie. I'm very excited. I've I've followed Ethan Page 
uh, here and there. We almost had him on the show once, actually. Uh, oh, wait, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that uh, was such a long time that, ago. Yeah, that's when he, that's when he first got to AEW. Um, but now he's here, so I'm interested to see the to follow him more a little bit a little bit more full time because I DBR NXT since we do it since we are streaming during the show right now. So I'll definitely watch it tomorrow after I watch Star Wars The Acolyte tonight. Probably. Uh, oh that came out? It can't it, no actually it's coming out in seven minutes at nine o'clock. <laughs> okay, we can wrap it up right <laughs> we can now. Power through. <laughs> tap tap. Let's go. No post show. Maybe we'll maybe we'll move towards that. Uh, so if that happens, that'll be our official prediction. I'm also going with Trick Williams as well. What we do know is happening is what really broke the internet last week. Roxanne Perez, the cutest about an NXT Women's Champion, who's in her bad girl era now at the age of 22. Ooh. Yeah, wearing all black with all the sass and everything now. Um, needed an opponent, and I don't know if you know this, but The Rock's daughter, Ava, is the general manager of NXT. Yes, I did. Yes, Pebbles, as we used to call her when she was a child. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the general manager of NXT. Um, and I actually love her NXT character because she... she <laughs> She she kind of teeters between kayfabe and and her real shoot personality when she gets pissed off at people, <laughs> so it's it's kind of funny. And she looks so much like her mom and her dad. It's kind of gross. It's no, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, she looks so much like the Rock. <laughs> yeah. Um. So Roxanne's been popping up like, "Who's my opponent? Who's my opponent? Who's my opponent?" And was like, "Well, all right, I got you your opponent." And Jordan Grace showed up. That's so. Crazy. Jordan Grace showed up with the knockouts title in hand, as in our graphic on here right now. So the NXT battleground, Jordan Grace is showing up with the TNA knockouts title. She is challenging Roxanne Perez for the NXT Women's Championship. If Trick and Ethan Page don't do anything on battleground, I believe this is the main event. This has to be the main event. This is huge absolutely huge it was a big surprise that she showed up at the royal rumble with the knockouts title now she's showing up on nx on wwe programming with the knockouts title her speech was absolutely great what'd she say she said roxanne just in case you forgot or if anybody forgot from the rumble my name is jordan grace the tna knockouts champion so they gave her freedom to literally say, I am the knockout champion from TNA, which is something that's so great, which is something that if you've been following, um, if you've been following uh, WWE forever, they never gave anybody permission to talk about anything else. No one by name. New Japan <laughs> is just the country of japan as a whole yeah it's it hasn't um, been until i think i think around a little bit before but definitely at wrestlemania when you watch the playback michael cole rattles off all of these different companies it was really nice to see mm -hmm. so uh fretz is saying that jordan grace had nx nx tna on her gear tonight and i need to see that because if that's a shirt i want it so badly she said, you know, you've been doing well here. I've been doing well here in my division, the knockouts division. She goes, let me ask you something, Roxanne. Who's who's built the better foundation? And I was like, ooh, that's a, that's a bold move because anybody who's really followed women's wrestling knows that the TNA knockouts division is consistently, by and large, over the past decade, probably the best women's division in all of pro wrestling. Oh, for sure. Like, <laughs> like I don't even fucking watch TNA, and I know that to be true. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a crazy thing that's happening. Jordan Grace looks like a million bucks. She's wrestling tonight in a little bit of a showcase match on NXT. I think she started out the show. Uh, but her knockouts title is not on the line this Sunday. Roxanne Perez's NXT title is on the line. Rumor has it that, number one, this collaboration has been in the works since Jordan Grace had such a positive reaction from the Rumble, and rightfully so. Uh, she was what, like the test? I think she was the test. Kind of? Yeah, she was. That's the a good test. It was a great test because she is. I've seen. I think Kay, were you with me when? No, I think I was with Wade when we saw Jordan Grace at um at Shine. I don't think we saw Jordan Grace. I don't remember though. It, I had to have been with Wade. You saw Shotzi the first time at Shine. 
Yes, I did. <laughs> that was the day I fell in love with Shotzi and Swole in one day. <laughs> yes, I remember. <laughs> that was me front row living. <laughs> that is true. Yes, Shotzi and Swole. Uh, so rumor has it that this has been works for a while, but also rumor has it that this might be the first of many TNA crossovers into WWE. Which we kind of hinted at That's before really cool. with AJ Styles potentially with the possibility of AJ Styles showing up on TNA in the near future. See AEW, this is how you work with another company. <laughs> you know, no, for real. Yeah. Like all I want are just all the wrestlers and all the dream matches to happen. And it's like really nice to see that it's actually possible now. Yeah, it's possible. Oh man. And like NXT is a great ground for this because WWE has been using a lot of the main roster talent to come down and, you know, help these people out. Becky Lynch did it for a little bit with Tiffany and Lara Valkyria. AJ Styles has come down. But if they can get TNA to kind of supplement that and have them show up instead of the main roster talent and, like, have CB's... CB's NXT towns work with performers outside of the company. Some who have had years and years of wrestling ahead of him, like Jordan Grace's Roxanne Perez. This is a big gift for everybody. It's a huge yeah, everybody gift. can learn. There's so much learning to be had. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a really exciting opportunity. I'm just nervous about like, like the roster, like people getting lost in the shuffle. I understand that even more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think this is. Potential is so exciting, but I just, I worry. It's it's going to be, it's going to be kind of a, you know, you're going to kind of do a little bit of a push and a pull. You're going to have to see where, where kind of things land, but I'm excited for this. With that being said, the NXT women's title is the only title on the line this Sunday. Okay. I'm going to have to ask you this. Do you think there is a slight chance that Jordan Grace leaves with both belts? Yes, Absolutely. I'm I'm predicting Jordan's gonna win. <laughs> Wait, you all right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I mean, if that happens, we're truly in a different era of WWE pro wrestling because that events would have never allowed that to happen. I think I which is I think is stupid events because by having Jordan carry two titles for two promotions, that puts more eyes on NXT. It does. There could be like more. There, there could be marks that think they're like WWE purists or whatever. Then Jordan Grace fucking walks into Impact and is like, I'm the NXT champion. They'll tune in for her. Absolutely. Absolutely. And she has she has so much she can teach like younger stars on the roster mm-hmm. while also giving Roxanne Perez like new opportunities. Like, I think she might move up soon, maybe. Ooh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. There, there's a lot of new opportunities for the women coming up, but Jordan Grace with the NXT and TNA championship makes even makes TNA impact must see TV then. Yeah. Like, and I don't think I've ever said that in my life as a pro wrestling podcaster, TNA impact being must see TV ever. Well, this is a new era. This completely is a new era. With that being said, I still don't know if NXT or Michael Hickenbottom a.k.a. Shawn Michaels, is bold enough to pull that trigger just yet. If it, if, if, all right, so if in main events, I think there's a bigger chance of it happening. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to main. I think it's, and I think it's happening. I'm, I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to go with Roxanne. Roxanne might pull a rabbit out of her hat. It's okay to pull it safe. Also (laughs) disregard the message I sent host. (laughs) <laughs> um, because say? it's off slightly. I did it. I made it. <laughs> Finding the most, I was trying to find a font as accurate as possible because the fonts I, ref- I was liking were too good. Yeah. We should have made it a rainbow font and sell it for pride. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I want a better snow. Okay. Pride okay. I, I understand. I understand. It was just, just a spur of the moment idea. All right. But great idea. <laughs> spur of the moment idea. All right. So moving on to this, speaking of opportunities for the women in NXT, okay, let me tell me if you've heard this before. Uh North American ladder match for <laughs> for for the NXT North American title. 
Oh my god, it's so creative and fresh. <laughs> yes, but it's for the women's North American Championship. So guess what? I have been bitching. I have been moaning for pretty much a majority of my uh, my pro wrestling podcast career that WWE needs a mid card women's title, and NXT is getting a mid card women's championship and they're going to do it the same way they did the the initial north american championship the initial mid-card championship of nxt in a six-person ladder match this time a six-woman ladder match your participants are mia yim last legend real life girlfriend i believe of trick williams kalani jordan real life girlfriend of carmelo hayes jada parker uh soul ruka surfer girl and fallon henley now these participants Yes, Fallon Henley has, I forgot what she went by on the Indies, but she had also shown up on AEW Dark a couple of times as well before going to WWE full-time. Uh, Clowney Jordan, a former mm-hmm. gymnast, Lash Legend, a tall glass of milk, and a former WNBA basketball player. Sol Ruka is a surfer, and I don't know where Jada Parker came from. Uh, but these parts, and there's also Mia Yim, they kind of steer her ship, because you know Mia Yim loves ladders. Um, so what was interesting about this, K, is that they did they did a women's combine. And so what they did with the women's combine was, was that they went through all these athletic uh, events and they got scored. And then the top like 12 women got, did one-on-one matches against each other based on your scores. And the six women, the six women who won their matches advanced to this. So those are your six, like I said, Mia Yim, Last Legend, Kalani Jordan, Fallon Henley, Sol Ruka, and Jada Parker. Okay. I don't know who any of these people are. Except for Mia Yim. Except for Mia Yim, and I don't think Mia Yim's going to win. I do not think Mia Yim's winning as well. I think Mia Yim's there just to kind of be the veteran. Yeah. <laughs> to kind of make sure no one goes too nuts. But there's a... It's like she's the Natalia of NXT. Kind of, even though Natalia was on NXT the other week. <laughs> she did an underground match, which was really good. And I don't know if you saw, what was it, Monday? Was it yesterday? They let Natalia wrestle yesterday. They? they let her like wrestle, wrestle. I was like, "Oh, we're getting spicy." Um, I don't know if I got busy, but I didn't see that. <laughs> well, did you watch? Was it from the clip I sent you? No, I watched. Oh, Hulu. you actually watched it? Watched it? They might have cut it. I don't know, but it was. A- I watched it, watched it, but I also like watched didn't it. pay attention. Like I should. I, I understand. It- this logo is fucking annoying. Why are you still trying to make this Wolf of Wall Street logo, Wolf of Wrestling logo? Because I'm so committed now. <laughs> And working on this logo while talking is helping me focus on this conversation more. Notice I'm not losing my place as much. I, I understand, and that's that's good. That's I, perfectly fine. I enjoy it. So here here's my thing with with this. Um, Miriam's not winning this, in my opinion. Uh, I think Lash Legend could be the one, but she's still stuck in that thing with Trick. Kalani Jordan, I think a little bit too green. So Rook and Jada Parkinson. I think you're giving it the Fallon Henley. Fallon Henley. Uh, just turned heel on everybody. She's again, she's also kind of in her bad girl. I don't give a fuck era. Um, and she's the most seasoned out of all of them outside of me. And I think Fallon Henley wins this. Um, she's not going to be obviously the fan favorite because she's a heel, but she's the most experienced. And I think she deserves this title as the inaugural NXT North American women's champion. I'm going to go with Fallon Henley. Okay, babe, who would you go with? Same because I don't know who these people are. <laughs> that works for me. I'm gonna go so Fallon and you Fallon. can tell me Santina Morella was in this ladder match, and I believe you. His daughter was almost qualified. Wait, really? Yeah. So Ariana Grace is Santino's daughter. So uh, you, I'll, I'll, wait, what? Ariana Grace. I don't know who that is, but I didn't know Santina had a daughter that's wrestling. Mm-hmm. She's uh, she's an NXT. You wanna know what her gimmick I- is? Oh God! She's a beauty. She's an obnoxious beauty pageant queen. Oh God! <laughs> I don't like that. Like at all. Oh my God, Kay, you'd hate her. You'd hate her oh, so God. much. <laughs> no thanks. You know whose daughter also Ooh. is in NXT? Who? Victoria's daughter. I don't know Victoria had a daughter. Yeah, Tatum Paxley. If you want to look her up, when you get a chance. Tatum Paxley is a chip off her mother's old block because you know what she is? She's a crazy, psychotic white chick. I see it. I'm looking at her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's giving me 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, back in your uh, back in your sh- your uh, kayfabe name? Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Did you look up Ariana Grace? No, one moment. 
One N or two? Uh, two N's, I believe. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, she she has her. I don't believe this woman does not look Canadian, though. She looks like she's from New Jersey. Who, Ariana Grace? Yes. I guess. <laughs> she's giving Jersey. I don't know. I'm looking at it. I guess the AI produced some picture of her, like a Maybe. stock photo of her. And she looks like she's from New Jersey. <laughs> she's, you... like Santina Morella from New Jersey. <laughs> That would be something. All right, so let's move on to the number championship match. Uh, NXT North American, Men's North American Championship, Triple Threat, Obafemi, that monster of a man, versus a returning Wesley who has been out for over a year with a really bad knee injury, versus Joe Coffey, because, yes, Gallus is still around. Ooh, <laughs> oh, I love Gallus. Bunch of thick boys there uh, with Gal. So, oh, a meat slapping <laughs> majesty man? Yes, it is. Did you watch Stand and Deliver from um, from oh. WrestleMania? So you have, of course I did. You have no idea about no. Obafemi, did, do you? Y'all told me that I would love Obafemi and that he's like the boy. He's the, he's the just, one. He's the one. I just haven't. Have did we tell you about that spot that he did? Remind me. He had Dijak and Josh Briggs on his shoulders. So, like, Josh Briggs was on Dijak's shoulders, and Dijak was on Obafemi's shoulders, and Obafemi had both of them, and he walked around the ring with them. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obafemi is not even in great. He's not even, like, cut. He still has a lot of, like, knows what happened. He was a former uh, football player, and Division One football player in college. He is thick. He is. He's a monster. Wow. He, he is a monster. I'm guessing you're looking him up right now. No, I'm. Are you still looking up Ariana Grace? Idea. Oh, you. No, Canva. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Obafemi is a monster. I honestly, to be, you know, I don't think Wesley, even though he just came back, is going to be. And I don't know why Joe Cobb is in there. Joe Cobb is in there just to be there. I'm going to go with Obafemi. I just think he's going to be the most dominant NXT champion for a very, very long time. He's positioned well. Based on this argument, I would say same. <laughs> We're going to go with Oba. It's so hard. I don't watch wrestling. <laughs> like, I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I feel like I'm like, wow, I feel like I'm someone that doesn't watch wrestling at all. Wow. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, yeah, so I think Obafemi is retaining here. Uh, let's move on then to the next match. Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler versus Lola Vice, two former Ultimate Fighting competitors. You wouldn't tell by looking at Lola Vice that she is actually a, a, a cage fighter way back when. Um, but if you see her wrestling, she does do a lot of cage fighting techniques. And oh, uh, she was aligned with Shayna Baszler for a little bit when Shayna, when Lola Vice went up against Natty in an NXT Underground match. And then Lola Vice got too big for her britches and her personality and thought she didn't need Shayna. So now her and Shayna are beefing. And this match, this match in particular, is going to be an NXT Underground match rules match so okay do you remember what is that do you remember raw like, on the, do you remember raw underground they're bringing back fucking raw underground they're they 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 took the raw underground concept because they've done this a couple of times and they modified it so here's the difference between here's here's what nxt underground is so what they do k for the underground match is they take the ring post out they take the ropes out it oh. is just the mat it is just. Ooh. It is just. That's so cool. <laughs> it's just. Boris. It's Boris. <laughs> so it's just the mat. Just came back. Hey Boris, it's just the mat. It's surrounded by uh, NXT talent, and the only way to win anything goes. Uh, no holds are barred. It's anything goes. The only way you win is by knockout or submission. Oh, that's fun. I like. That. And they also yeah. dim the lights. Ever, I think Shayna will win. Of all the underground matches I've seen ever since they done they started doing this NXT underground concept, I love it. It's very unique to NXT. They don't do it anywhere else in WWE. Um, yeah. 
I enjoy it. It brings a little bit of raw and uh, raw grittiness to it. Um, and for a place like this, we're doing this in an UFC style in the UFC, essentially building an arena, having an underground match with two former cage fighters is perfect. That's really fun and really like smart. Yeah. That's great marketing. It's beautiful marketing. Um, Oh my God. Shayna needs a win so badly. <laughs> Shayna. That's, yeah. Shayna needs a I win really say, badly. Yeah. I was feeling that Shayna's going to win because I feel like she could use a win from what I understand. She could. She's on the main roster. She's partnered up with Zoe Stark. And you know who's courting them? Who? A returning Daddy DeVille. Daddy's back? Oh, Daddy came back a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and she's on NXT now? No, she's on Smack uh, Raw. She's on Raw. She returned on Raw. Wait, why didn't I notice her on Raw? When did she come back on Raw? A couple weeks ago. Like three weeks ago. <laughs> I've been watching Raw every week. I'm very confused. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good for me. <laughs> yeah. Daddy Laville came back. Um, so I can, as much as I can see Lola Vice winning this match, I, ooh, Lola also needs a win too. But if Shayna is here to make Lola look better, then I'm going to go with Lola while you go with Shayna. Yeah. Although, that granted, I would too. not be surprised if Shayna Baszler wins. I wouldn't be surprised I, at all. I feel like if Shayna doesn't win this match, like, what's what's there for her? Yeah. You know? She does have a a, a pending uh, and a pending women's tag title match against Bianca and Jade. Okay. Because her and Zoe are number one contenders. So there is but that. they're not going to win. Oh, no, definitely not. You're not taking those titles off of Bianca and Jade anytime soon. No. By the way, no way. Sideberg, real quick. I love Bianca and Jade matching every. Oh, my God. They're <laughs> so good. Everything. They're so fucking good. They're excellent. They're having so much fun. I, it's gross. <laughs> I, I know. I'm, like, very excited about them breaking up. But, jam, I love them right now. <laughs> Did you see their tandem pose, a tandem flex pose? It's so cute. <laughs> oh, it, it's it's going to be great. But yeah. So last but not least on this card, which is going to be uh, da, 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 the NXT Tag Team Championships, Axiom, formerly known as A-Kid K, but he wears a mask now. He is Axiom and Nate Frazier putting their tag titles on the line against the Good Brothers. Gallows what? and Anderson. Yeah, they they're they're doing a little bit of a tour on NXT right now too. Okay. Um I don't know who these tag champions are. A Kid is so, Axiom. Oh, A Kid's really, really good. A Kid is okay. Axiom and Nathan Fraser is a graduate of Seth Rollins uh Black and Black and Brave, as I think it, I think it was called. Yeah, they're black and brave. How long have they been champions for? They won it uh during Stand and Deliver. That was during Mania. Yeah. Um, I could see the Good Brothers winning to further strengthen AJ Styles' fake retirement tour. Honestly, I'm with you on that. I I totally think that I totally think that's the move. If they're gonna go like full like rabid like heel guys like they used to be in Japan. I think you, I want that for them so bad. I think they give it to Gallows and Anderson. I don't know what you do with Mia Yim at that point because she hasn't really shown that side of her. Mm. I like forget she's with them all the time, and then they'll show up, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, you guys are Mia Yim. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I kind, I kind of am going with the Good Brothers here. I think they take it. It would be fun. It would be nice to see them as champions. Mm -hmm. They've got a little bit more edge to them now. I like mm -hmm. I like them. They're funny as hell in real life. You're so funny, <laughs> my hot Asian wife. <laughs> did I did I did we ever tell you about that, Kay? About what? So I think it was me, Dave, and Charles. We were walking down. 
It, oh, didn't you meet them? Yeah. In the city? Yeah, because I think Dave stopped as we were walking uh, walking to Barclays. He l- was that when I was meeting up with you? I don't remember. Because I, I, there was one time we were meeting up at, to, at, in Brooklyn. Yeah. And you guys met someone on the way to me meeting up with you. That might have been it. Yeah. That might have been it. Yeah. I was very mad. Da- yeah, Dave stopped to look into a restaurant because Shivani was there. And he was, oh, really? Yeah. And he was like, oh, look, it's Tony Schiavone. I was like, oh, shit. You know, and then, um, and then as we, as we were turning about to walk, we saw a car, we saw a taxi parallel parking. And then big ass Luke Gallo sticks his head out of the window to make sure the guy's good. How Luke Gallo's got into a New York City taxi is beyond me. Impressive. <laughs> yeah. Is beyond me, and so it was like a normal car, not <laughs> yeah, like a no- the taxi van. It was a normal car. I was like, "How?" Do- and this is before. Wow. This is a Monday. That's why, because we were we were we were around on Monday because we both went to Raw. And so, oh yeah, because in my head I was like, "Aren't you guys on Raw? Shouldn't you guys be at the arena already?" <laughs> yes, that yes, that was the time mm-hmm. because I was. That was when I. That was re- wasn't that WrestleMania weekend when Something I went with like fucking that. just. Yes. yes, it was WrestleMania weekend when I went with Justin, and Justin made us fucking late. And that's why I didn't get to meet the fucking <laughs> Good Brothers. Yeah, we ended. I think Charles ended up taking the pics because the taxi cab driver wanted the pics, and so they took a pics with them. So like we we chatted them up a little bit. Like Luke Gallows is huge, absolutely oh, big I'm man, sure. big man. But yeah, no, cool dudes. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the Good Brothers here. I, I have I think a that's feeling. A very good choice. I have a strong feeling we're we're gonna get some good brothers in NXT. They'll they'll definitely make their tag division a lot more interesting. Uh, For sure. So yeah, that's all we have in the card. A short and sweet card, unlike AEW, which is loaded with a lot of stuff. Oh my god. Yes. So Battleground again this Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh 7 30, I think, pre-show start time as well. But of course, K, we have some bonus questions. It's gonna be short and simple bonus questions. Um oh, good. Yeah. Uh so since this first question is, since this is going to be in a UFC building, arena, whatever the hell you're calling it, mm-hmm. my question is, how many UFC fighters make an appearance on the show? There is no plus Five. or minus here, just a straight number. Five. I'm not naming them because I don't know any. <laughs> You're going with five. But That's a big I'm going, number. <laughs> I'm going with five, but I'm counting that five starting from like pre-show, like someone showing up I, on commentary all the way through I'll the show. That. Okay, with that big, I'm still going three. <laughs> I'm going three. Um, but no, and I'm counting like surprise audience views. I, I believe that as well. Um, so another battleground question for you, since since we're in the prohibited portal era of WWE, um. Will we see other TNA talent appear during Battleground? Um, That's a yes or no, by the way. Will we see TNA talent? Mm-hmm. Is the question outside of Jordan Grace? Will anybody from will anybody else from TNA show up on during Battleground? Probably. I don't see why not. I mean, if we're gonna go full fledged into it, then might I feel as well. like if it. They're trying to make like a huge deal out of this weekend in general. Like mm-hmm. make it it's feeling very big fight feel. Yeah. Lots of celebrities showing up. I could absolutely by celebrities, I mean like in the wrestling and MMA world. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely feel like it'll happen. I find it I, so hysterical that WWE started to do this the same month as Forbidden Door in AEW. It's very funny. <laughs> I live. I think it's great. I live for the pettiness, to be completely honest. Me too. <laughs> I live. Like, I see this as someone that was, like, such a huge fan of AEW. Like, I'll watch it, but, like, I, every, I don't know. Maybe this is the punk mark in me. But, like, it never recovered for me. Yeah, they. And I see what's wrong with it, like, a lot more now. Like, I guess the shininess wore off for me. Yeah, you you took off the rose colored glasses. Yeah, you know what's the shame? It's like they have such a good roster. They have such a good roster. Yeah, 
and they could be do so much more than what they're doing. It was really funny before we go into the final bonus question. I was um I saw a tweet from that was quoting Tony Khan, I guess, on a media thing. And he was like, because someone asked about Ricky Starks, you know, absolute Ricky Starks, one of their boys that they that they were hot yeah. on for a while. And Tony, somebody's like, oh, what's what's going on? With Ricky Starks he goes, oh, we love Ricky Starks. You know, Ricky Starks has been a big part of our part of our programming and stuff. You know, we're definitely oh, we definitely can, you know, we're definitely open to like, you know, doing stuff with him in the future and really having him be a part of a show a lot more. And someone retweeted and said, Tony, you're the booker. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, what is wrong with AEW? It's Tony. It's always been Tony. <laughs> like, this is, like, I understand that I'm not the one that should probably be, like, preaching, like, don't you drugs, kids. But, like, <laughs> Tony Khan <laughs> should probably take a tea break. <laughs> Just saying. Or something. They, they, they get, they're doing better with their marketing. So, you know how the NBA has TNT? Or TNT has the NBA. Yeah. So, they had the Western Conference Finals. I was watching this during the uh, Western Conference Finals post-show. They gave all of the NBA on TNT guys replica AEW belts. Oh, that's really cute. I was like, hey, guys, you're getting smart. <laughs> like, that like, is smart. You're getting smart. I saw, that, I saw that Willow and Swerve were at the House of Dragon premiere in the city yesterday. I believe they were, yeah. Good for them. That is that is also yeah. my my thing as a, we go on an AEW tangent as well. Um, I'm so upset that Swerve's not the main storyline. I know. I'm very upset about that. He's so good. Yeah, he's 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 very good. And he he worked to get that title. Yeah, he did. Like he's done so well in AEW. Um, even with that dumbass dance. <laughs> I, okay, I hate that dance so much. Do you? I hate it so much. It's just I was like, oh, there's there's so much, there's so much just ridiculousness in it. But last but not least. They did this at Stand and Deliver when they signed when they signed Julia from New Japan. Do we get another surprise NXT signee? Probably. I'm actually. Do I have to guess who it is? No, no, no. You just can say yes. And there's another yes oh, or no. Oh, good. We're going simple this week. Yes, absolutely. I do. I'm gonna go with no. I don't think they. Well, my here's my reasoning. You now have TNA. You pretty much solidified yeah. you have TNA. There's no most there's no space to sign someone new at this point. That makes sense. <laughs> there's no space. Your big signing is Ethan Page right now. And Ethan Page was not formerly a TNA, but more more recently AEW. I don't think there's any room. They're waiting for Julia to, I think, get healed before she blows up. Um mm -hmm. so I I think I think they're hold off for now. I think Julia was a big get. It was WrestleMania weekend. That was a huge deal. That she showed up. Um, but I don't think you do it for Battleground. Also because I don't think the arena's big enough for a pop like that. Like remember we go to takeovers and the arena's packed and then like all of a sudden mm -hmm. Ricochet showed up or Keith Lee showed up or Drew McIntyre returned. And it was like, like I don't think the UFC Apex Arena is set up for that massive a pop that they would want to go for. You know what I mean? Not at all. Yeah. Not at all, no. So I think I think you hold off on, on that signee. For for right now, whoever it may be, um, she imagine if it's Becky Lynch, she re she resigns a contract, and she shows up at NXT. <laughs> oh my God! Stop. No, I think she's on. I think she's on vacation. Let her go see her family. Yeah, her contract's up. She's going to renegotiate. Yeah, she's going to get a new contract. Take some time off. A well deserved time off. Yeah, she needs. She deserves a break very much. Yeah, be with Seth. Her and Seth can be parents for once, for like for real, for real. While Seth recovers and Becky's renegotiating her contract, and or yeah. getting a new contract. It's not a renegotiation. Her contract expired. Getting a new contract. Um, and they'll they'll chill out and well deserved break. Seth des has deserved a break for a long time. Becky, Becky and Seth have been the workhorses of of that. Um. I've WWE for a very, very long time, and they deserve a break, and they deserve all the money that's going to come to them when they return. But for right, Absolutely. But for right now, let them take a break. Let them relax. So, NXT Battleground, once again, how many crowns are you going to give us, K? One being the worst, 10 being uh, the best thing ever. What do you, what do you got for me? I'll give it a seven. I like seven. I like seven. I don't know what. 
I know nothing about any of this. I'm just here to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> it was either that you know? or I was probably going to go to the movies, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. If you wanted, if you ever want kids to go to the movies, you absolutely are welcome to do that. That is the only problem with with, this, with us doing the show on Tuesdays now, because usually it's discount Tuesdays. So I can always go see someone for cheap. But now I can't anymore because we have a show. We could also always like, like change our schedule a little bit. Like we just we change it to every- Tuesday. No, no, no. Keep Tuesday, but we don't do every Tuesday. That's very true. But like, you know, we, we just started. But it's like a balance. Like yeah. there are some Tuesdays where nothing's going on. Yeah. I mean, we usually play by year, but we, we're going to do one next Tuesday though, uh, because we're doing battleground, but next, next Tuesday, K is clash at the castle. Oh fuck already. Yeah. It's a quick oh turnaround. God. And then two weeks after clash of the castle is forbidden door during pride weekend. So How homophobic. <laughs> Everyone, I have so many friends who are like, are you going to Forbidden Door? I'm like, it's fucking on Pride. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Bitch, like, no. I will be hosting. Are you going to be hosting the Pride host- party? Um, yeah, I have friends, like Long Island friends coming in, and we're going. They're staying all weekend. Mm-hmm. The parades and everything is Sunday. Saturday, they're doing a Pride event in Astoria Park. And then we're going to go out at night. It's going to be very fun. Oh, jeez. Stay safe, Kat. I can't wait. I will. <laughs> Stay safe. With that being said, folks, this concludes our show this week. Like I said, we are going to be returning next week for Clash at the Castle and whatever shenanigans or wildness that's going to go on in the world of pro wrestling. Kayfabe, any final words before I do my outro or our outro? Um, naturally, it's that time where the edible has kicked in. <laughs> so I'm going to make this outro. <laughs> short um you can find me on instagram at k underscore fabe um and yeah that's it i have nothing to plug because <laughs> that's that's i not... have logos to work on you do have logos he to has... work on i stopped designing and i have nothing to say all right I'd less, i'm glad i timed that pretty well for you too by the way, not the edibles and stuff is kicked. And looks like the edibles kicked in for <laughs> Boris behind you, too. <laughs> Boris! Hi! <laughs> wow, I just made that whole thing like sitting and smiling. Oh, my God. All right, folks, let's get this show on the <laughs> road. My goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to KOTR, episode number 378, laid it on thick because we laid it on thick tonight with a crazy Liv Morgan podcast. Pastel suits and Jordan Grace, Thick Mama Pump may actually be be headlining an NXT Premium Live event this Sunday. NXT Battleground being this Sunday evening. I've been your host, King Ricky Rose, and uh, you can find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets: B I G Z Ambassador Biggs, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook. Some people's DMs, less people's text messages. Ambassador Biggs. Find Kings of the Rings podcast at K O T R underscore podcast across all social media outlets. Like, share, subscribe, leave us five star reviews. Uh, the links to all of that are in the description below, along with the links to Wrestling Radio, the cure for the common wrestling podcast, home to Kings of the Rings podcast, uh, Young Lions Respected podcast, WrestleMania podcast, and Rebrace for Impact Wrestling podcast, which naturally covers TNA. It looks like we're going to have to do a crossover with Nate sometime soon. Uh, okay. Follow Wrestle Addict Radio at Addict underscore Wrestle on Twitter and at Wrestle Addict Radio everywhere else on the social media. Like I said, folks, when we come back, Boris will probably also be, look at that smiling cute dog. Boris will be with us. Hopefully, KFA will be back. Hopefully, Will will be back because we are going to clash at the castle next week where, lo and behold, folks, Drew McIntyre is losing to the hands of CM Punk. Just, I'm just putting it out there. Just putting it out there, folks. So until next week, goodbye, good night. We will see you soon. And Kay, you want to do the honors? Yeah, fuck you, Slack. Fuck you, Slack. See you next week. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.